after FDA approves the use of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of COVID-19, some health experts have been concerned about this because of the adverse effects that may be seen after the intake of these drugs. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some well-known side effects of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. Also, I will note some points on interaction of these drugs with other drugs to see uh, which drugs are safe to take along with and which are not. When taken in proper doses and for recommended total durations, chloroquine is very safe with only some mild side effects such as GI upset, headache, visual disturbances and urticaria. Pruritus may be seen in people with dark skin color and the reason is that the drug mainly accumulate in the melanin containing tissues and dark skins have more melanin than white skins. Acute chloroquine toxicity is encountered most frequently when therapeutic or high doses are administered too rapidly by parenteral roots. Toxic manifestation can be seen in cardiovascular system with vasodilation leading to hypotension, myocardial functions suppressed, cardiac arrhythmias, and eventual cardiac arrest. Some CNS symptoms like confusion, convulsion, and coma may result from overdose. If these symptoms are seen, immediate treatment with mechanical ventilation, epinephrine, and diazepam may be life-saving. Chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are also used for treating non-malarial conditions such as systemic lupus erythematosus and rheumatoid arthritis. And for these conditions, they are given in higher doses, sometimes more than 250 mg per day. And this can result in irreversible retinopathy. Chloroquine gets accumulated in the retinal pigment layer around macula and damages it. Since macula has a very high concentration of photoreceptor cells, damage to it can significantly reduce the vision. This condition is known as bull's eye maculopathy. Chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine can also accumulate in cornea leading to corneal opacity. So ophthalmologic monitoring is advised every 5-6 to six months. However, these effects on the eye can be avoided by reducing the doses of drug to less than 250 mg per day. In rare instances, these drugs can cause hemolysis in G6PD deficiency patients. Graying of hair or hair loss, skin discoloration, discoloration of nail beds and mucous membranes can be seen. Some adverse hematological effects including neutropenia, aplastic anemia and thrombocytopenia can be seen due to bone marrow suppression. So hematological status must be monitored. Also chloroquine is not recommended for treating individuals who have epilepsy or myasthenia gravis. Now coming to drug interaction. Chloroquine should not be given with gold or phenylbutazone in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis because of tendency of all three agents to produce dermatitis. Chloroquine should not be prescribed for patients with psoriasis or other exfoliative skin condition and also patients with porphyria cutanea tarda because it can cause severe cutaneous reactions. It should not be given with mefloquine which is another anti-malarial drug because of increased risk of seizures and lack of added benefits. Chloroquine can prolong QT interval in ECG so it should not be taken with amiodarone which also prolongs QT interval. Together these agents can affect your heart rhythm leading to ventricular arrhythmias. Chloroquine can also increase the plasma level of digoxin and cyclosporine, hence increasing their risk of toxicity as well. However, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine along with methotrexate can improve the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Chloroquine can also be given with metronidazole for extraintestinal infections such as hepatic abscess and amoeboma. Thank you.